Quick Start Tutorial for the Universal Avionics System Corporation UNS-1 with 600 series software. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to get the UNS-1 up and running quickly. You'll learn about initializing the Universal Navigation System, creating a flight plan or route, editing a flight plan or route, using fuel pages, nav pages, and the direct to function, heading mode, heading intercept, and holding patterns. You must initialize the UNS prior to enabling any other function. Initialization consists of confirming or entering the aircraft's location, date, and time. In most cases, GPS will provide position, date, and time, and you'll simply verify them. Here's how. First, press the on-off key and wait for the initialization page. You may then either wait until the GPS appears in the ID field and then press Accept to accept the displayed date, universal time coordinated, and position. Or press the List key to access a list of airports. Enter the reference number for the airport in the cursor field. If necessary, press the Line Select key to position the cursor over the ID field. Press the Enter key to accept the date and time, and press the Line Select key adjacent to accept. In the event that the system was not shut down at the present location, GPS is not available, or the time and date are incorrect, these values may be entered with the alphanumeric keys in the appropriate field by placing the cursor over the field with the Line Select key. Routes and flight plans are similar. A route is a series of waypoints stored in the Routes section of the pilot database. When a route is copied into the FPL or flight plan function, it becomes a flight plan. Flight plans and routes are created in the same manner, except that flight plans are created under the FPL key and is the waypoint routing the aircraft will actually fly, while routes are created under the data key for long-term storage. A previously stored route may be copied to the flight plan from the Copy Route page. To do that, press the FPL key and with the Line Select key, select Copy Pilot Route. Then, enter the reference number of desired route. For our example, we'll create a flight plan. Flight plan page 1 of 1 should have the departure airport as waypoint number 1. If it doesn't, use the list key to access a list of airports, or use the alphanumeric keys to type in the airport IKO identifier and enter. Let's create the flight plan. Seattle Tacoma International Airport, SUMA 5 departure. Lakeview Transition, Jet 5 Londo, Jet 50 to Gila Bend, Dingo 5 Arrival, Runway 11 Left, VOR with a MAVA Transition to Tucson International Airport. First, use the Menu key to bring up the Flight Plan menu, page 1 of 1. Select Depart with the Line Select key. Next, Select the number corresponding to the active runway and enter. We'll use runway 16 right. Now select the SID in the same manner. In this case, that's the SUMA 5 departure. This is often followed by the selection of a transition, for example, Lakeview. Next, select Flight Plan with the Line Select key. Pressing the Next key displays the page with the last flight plan entry. If there is no blank cursor following the last flight plan entry, press the Line Select key next to the space following the last flight plan entry to bring up a blank cursor. The waypoint preceding the cursor will be the reference waypoint for the list search. 
Press the List key to bring up the List page and use the Line Select key to right to select Airways. Airways will only be available for the List Reference Waypoint. From the list, select the desired airway and enter the number into the cursor field and press Enter. Here, it's Jet 5. You must then choose the airway exit point. Use the Next key to move to additional pages of waypoints. For our example, we select Londo. If you have more airways, continue to use this procedure until you reach your destination airport or the waypoint that begins the star. We select Jet 50 and exit at Gila Bend. Now enter the ICAO designation for the destination airport. You can use the alphanumeric keys and the enter key or use the list key to select the destination airport. For our example, select or type KTUS. The next step is to press the menu key to bring up the flight plan menu and select arrive with the line select key. Enter the active runway by typing the corresponding number and pressing the Enter key. We select 1 1 left. OK, with the same procedure, enter the correct star for your route of flight or, if no star is available or appropriate, select Approach with the Line Select key and enter the desired approach. That's Dingo 5 Arrival with the Gila Bend Transition, in our example. Almost finished. A list of approaches is now available from which to select. This will be followed by a list of transitions. We select the Runway 11 Left VOR with the MAVA Transition. And finally, we select Flight Plan to enter the arrival into the flight plan. Now here's an important note. Most aircraft will not have the ability to fly FMS Localizer back course or ILS approaches. In this case, selection of one of these approaches will provide course and missed approach routing but not with approach tolerances and no vertical information will be presented on aircraft instruments. When appropriate, select these approaches to see approach transition, approach alignment, and missed approach routing, but do not use the FMS to fly the approach. Waypoints may be added or deleted from the flight plan or route as follows. To add a waypoint, Press the FPL key until the waypoint to follow the new waypoint appears. Then, press the Line Select key to place the cursor over it. For example, let's place the cursor over Heart. Now, use the List menu page to locate the appropriate waypoint and enter it as you learned in the previous section. An airway may be added in the same manner. The list process will choose waypoints in the geographical area of the list reference waypoint. We'll select Lima Mike Tango.
An alternative to selecting the waypoint from a list is to make a direct entry using the alphanumeric keys. But be careful when using this process, as the same identifier may be used for several locations. When that's the case, use the next or previous keys to cycle through waypoints with the same name before using the Enter key. To delete a waypoint in the flight plan, proceed as follows. Press the flight plan key until the waypoint you want to delete appears. Press the Line Select key to place the cursor over that waypoint. For example, we'll delete the waypoint Lima Mike Tango. Next, press the Line Select key adjacent to DEL. And finally, press the DEL Line Select key again to delete the waypoint. One or more waypoints can easily be deleted with a single procedure. Here's how to do that. Begin by pressing the flight plan key until the first waypoint you want to delete appears. Next, press the line select key adjacent to that waypoint. And finally, type the number of the first waypoint to remain on the flight plan, then press enter. All intervening waypoints will be deleted. There are also two shortcuts. Entering a 98 in a cursor field on a flight plan waypoint will delete that waypoint and all subsequent waypoints. Entering a 99 will delete all the waypoints on the flight plan. On occasion, a no-link waypoint will appear. This means that the FMS cannot link the previous waypoint to the next one. To fix it, you can simply delete the no-link waypoint and let the FMS fly directly from one waypoint to the next. But you should exercise caution before doing so and thoroughly review the flight plan waypoints around the no link to ensure the routing is correct. You can store a flight plan as a route. With the flight plan displayed, press the menu key and select the line select key for store flight plan. The current flight plan will be stored as a route in the pilot database. To delete an entire flight plan, first press the FPL key, then press the menu key, and finally press the line select key adjacent to the delete FPL key twice. The flight plan will be deleted. Before we get started with fuel pages, note that fuel entries are optional. For fuel predictions to be calculated, the fuel page 1 must be filled. Fuel and weight entries should be made as accurately as possible to provide the best predictions. The fuel quantity is a pilot entry only and has no direct relationship to actual fuel quantity. On a few aircraft, fuel quantity is entered directly from the fuel quantity indicator. Pressing the fuel key will access the fuel 1 of 5 page. To initialize the fuel quantity, first enter the BOW, basic operating weight, if it's not already present, using the line select key. Next, enter number of packs. The average passenger weight may be set by using the menu key to access the fuel menu. Enter zero if appropriate. The total packs weight will now have a cursor overlay. Further alterations in the pack's weight can now be made if necessary. Press the Enter key when you're finished. Now enter the cargo weight. Enter zero if appropriate. The ZFW zero fuel weight field will be calculated and the cursor will move to fuel on board. There are two entry methods for fuel entry. To choose a method, press the menu key while on the Fuel 1 of 5 page. Use the line select key adjacent to fuel entry. Select the appropriate method and press the enter key. 
We recommend the by total method unless the aircraft's total fuel exceeds 99,000 pounds. For this method, simply use the line select key to enter the aircraft fuel in the fuel on board field and press the enter key. Alternatively, if you choose the buy tank option, the line select key will access the tank 1 cursor field. Fields are available on the page for as many as six tanks, but keep in mind that the fields have no relationship to any specific aircraft fuel tanks. So if you're entering more than 99,999 pounds of fuel, simply enter the excess in tank 2. When you're finished entering a value for the last tank, press the Enter key twice. The total fuel will be displayed in the Total field. Now, press the Line Select key adjacent to RTN, Return, and the gross weight is calculated. Use the Line Select keys to enter Alternate, Hold, and or Extra Fuel to compute the total reserves or to enter the total reserves directly. This figure is used in later fuel pages. The remaining fuel pages are dynamic. They provide flight plan and fuel information for the flight in progress based on the entries in the fuel page 1 of 5. Some of the information included is as follows. Gross weight. Distance remaining, ETE and ETA. Fuel used, required, and available overhead destination. Time and range. Fuel flow. And finally, specific range, nautical miles per pound of fuel. When connected to the aircraft's autopilot, the UNS-1 will navigate the aircraft on the flight plan selected. Two nav pages are available to monitor the aircraft's progress. Nav page 1 displays the from, to, and next waypoints, along with wind information, cross track, ground speed, bearing, and track error. Nav page 2 presents FMS position, nav sensors being used, quality of position, and other options depending on configuration. A direct to function is available with the DTO key. To proceed direct to a waypoint, simply press the DTO key to access the direct page and enter the reference number of the waypoint. Use the list function to choose a waypoint or type the desired waypoint identifier. Nav page 1 shows from present position to the waypoint. To enter a waypoint not on the flight plan, type in the identifier and press the Enter key twice to verify and accept or use the List function. The system will prompt for a next waypoint. To connect with the remainder of the flight plan. FMS heading mode is useful for flying radar vectors and for intercepting FMS-defined navigation legs. To utilize the heading mode, select Nav page 1 of 2. Press the Line Select key adjacent to HDG heading to access the HDG page. Enter the desired heading with the numeric keys and press Enter. Press the Enter key again to accept the turn direction. The shortest direction is default, 
but the plus minus key can be used to change the turn direction from right to left. To cancel heading mode, press the line select key adjacent to CNCL or cancel heading. Use of the DTO function key and selection of a new two waypoint will also cancel the heading mode. Please note, canceling the FMS heading mode causes the FMS to steer the aircraft to the current from to leg. An intercept heading of up to 45 degrees to the leg is possible and likely. If the heading of the aircraft will intercept the from to leg defined on the nav heading select page, Intercept will appear next to the Line Select key. Press the Line Select key next to Intercept. The present heading will be maintained. However, the aircraft, when reaching the From To leg, will intercept the course and proceed to the To Waypoint. A new nav page now shows the intercept of the From To leg. You can program a holding pattern at any waypoint on or off the flight plan. You can store it for later use or activate it immediately. Immediate activation results in a direct to the holding pattern fix. Here's how to program a holding pattern. Begin by pressing the line select key adjacent to MNVR maneuver to access the MNVR page. Next. Press the Line Select key next to Holding Definition to access the Holding Pattern page. Accept the default fix. Enter the number of a flight plan waypoint, or with the alphanumeric keys, enter a new holding fix. Now accept the default settings for the holding pattern variables, or use the Line Select key to change them as necessary. The plus minus key toggles left to right. The enter key must be used to enter each definition filled. Arm hold will place the holding pattern into the flight plan. When the aircraft arrives at that waypoint, it will enter holding. DTO hold or direct to hold will cause the FMS to navigate directly to the holding fix and hold as programmed. Now let's see how to exit the holding pattern. You can do that either by going direct to a waypoint, which results in an immediate exit of the holding pattern, or selecting proceed with the line select key, which will result in the aircraft continuing in the current pattern until reaching the holding fix, then proceeding to the next fix. And that concludes our brief tutorial on using the Universal Avionics System Corporation UNS-1 with 600 series.